Excuse me, well, I'll be a little looking forward to seeing you at your convenience. Where's Vita Louise? I judge Gaffney will know where she is. She took Uncle Elwood out to the sanitarium. Sit down, won't you? I know that much. Half an hour ago, she called my club completely hysterical. Couldn't understand a word she said. Now, what's going on? Well, I don't know. She took Uncle Elwood out to the sanitarium. All she had to do was put him in. Guess what? I think I've sold this house. Myrtle May. This house does not belong to you. Belongs to your Uncle Elwood. Well, now that Uncle Elwood's locked up, we control the property, don't we? You have a point. Well, then I'll be able to take a long trip now. Out to Pasadena. I always liked that boy. He had everything. Brains, personality, friends. Women liked him. Men liked him. I liked him. Too bad. Mother! Big Louise, what's wrong, girl? I never thought I'd see either of you again. Oh, Grandma, Judge, it wasn't so good. It's all right. It's going to be perfectly all right. Steady, steady, girl, steady. Please, not so fast. Don't Mother. rush her, Myrtle. Ease just, her in. Let me sit down just over here. Just don't sleep right. Uh, sit down. Yes, sir, sir. There you are. Uh -huh. Myrtle, get her feet oh. up. Oh. Oh. You like some tea, Vita? Oh. Get her some tea, Myrtle. No, I don't want to. Get her coat off. Let Myrtle get your coat off, Vita. Get her coat off, Myrtle. Let me, uh, let me just sit here. Let me get my breath. Better get a breath, Judge. Let me just sit here for a few minutes. And then let me get upstairs to my own bed where I can let go. Well, what happened to your mother? I want you to sue them, Omar. They put me in and let Elwood out. Vita, huh? what did you do? Nothing. Well, you must have done something. I didn't do a single thing. I just told them about Elwood and Harvey. Then how could it happen to you? I don't understand it. I just told them about Elwood, and then I went down to the taxi cab to get his things, and when I was walking along the path, this terrible man stepped out. He was a white slaver. I know he was. He had on one of those white suits. That's how they advertised. Man, what did he do, Mother? What did he do? He took me in there, and he took me upstairs, and then he... <sighs> Impossible. It's impossible. Oh, Mother, was he a young man? Myrtle May, I think perhaps you better leave the room. No, I should say not. Go on, Mother. What did he do? He took me upstairs. And he tore my clothes off. Stop it. Oh, oh, go on, Mother. And then he set me down in a tub of water. Oh, for heaven's sake. I always thought... That what you were showed on your face. Don't you believe it, Myrtle? Don't you believe it, Judge? That man took a hold of me like I was a woman of the streets. But I fought. I always said if a man jumped at me, I'd fight. Haven't I always said that, Myrtle May? Yes, that's what she's always said, Judge. That's what Mother's always told me to do. And then he hustled me into that sanitarium and he set me down in that tub of water and began to treat me like I was a... a what? Crazy woman. But he did that just for spite. Myrtle, ice. Don't you ever go out there, do you hear me, Myrtle May? Oh, those doctors came up, and they began to ask me a lot of questions about sex urges and all that filthy stuff. That place ought to be cleaned up, Omar. You've got to get the authorities to clean that place up. You've got to do something, Judge. You've got to sue them. Peter, what really happened? Tell me, Judge. Is that all those doctors do out in places like that? Think about sex. I don't know. Ita, no man or boy has wanted to lay a hand on you in 40 years. Now, what really happened? I told you. And I don't want to discuss it anymore. I just want to sue them. But, Vita, you can tell us anything. This is your daughter. I'm your lawyer. I know which is which. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I just want to sue them. And I want to get in my own bed. Well, Mother, where was Uncle Elwood? How should I know? They let him go. They're not interested in men in places like that. Don't be so naive, Myrtle May. Well, no matter who jumped at him, we still have to lock up Uncle Elwood. Well, I don't know where he is. Next time, Judge, you take him. Oh, wait till Elwood. Here's what they did to me out there. He won't stand for it. Don't forget to sue them, Judge. Myrtle May, all I hope for you is that never, never, as long as you live, a man tears the clothes off you and then dumps you down into a tub of water. Your uncle.
uncle thinks the world and all of your mother. Ever since he was a little boy, he always wanted to share everything he had with her. Don't ask me why, but it's true. Oh, save some of that sympathy for me and mother. There are things about Uncle Ellen we haven't told anybody, not even you. You just wait till I show you what he brought home six months ago when we hit it out in the garage. Now you just wait. Okay, is he here? Is who here? The crackpot with the rabbit. Is he here? No. And who, may I ask, are you? Not in here, doctor. Uh, Palmer. Sorry. Now let's not waste time. Has he been here? I have to inform you that I've been retained to bring suit against you. What? For what happened to Mrs. Simmons at the sanitarium this afternoon. Water under the dam. Now, the important thing is to get this man and bring him back to the sanitarium where he belongs. That's right. That's just what I think, Judge. This is Myrtle May Chumley, Mr. Dowd's niece, Mrs. Simmons' daughter, Dr. Chumley. How do you do, Dr. Chumley? How do you do, Miss Simmons? Hiya, Myrtle. What? Oh. Now, I want to talk to Mrs. Simmons. Oh, Mother won't come down, Doctor. I know she won't. We'll get Mother to talk to him, Doctor. Now, about this suit. What suit? Attempted rape. Oh, nonsense. I want you to come upstairs with me and look into the situation and see what you've done on your behalf. Yeah, Doctor. You have violated the suit. Well, <laughs> so your name's Myrtle May? What? Yes. Yeah. Hey, you know, if we grab your uncle, you'll probably be coming out to the sanitarium on visiting day. Oh, I don't know. Well, if you do, I'll be there. You will? Yeah. Hey, if you don't see me right away, though, stick around for a little while. I'll show up. You will? Yeah. You heard what the doctor said. He told me to wait. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, I could use a sandwich and a cup of coffee. Oh, certainly. If, if you'll excuse me, I'll proceed you into the kitchen. And Myrtle? Yes. <laughs> into the kitchen. Oh, <laughs> Chumley's rest? Is Dr. Chumley there? Oh, this is Mrs. Chumley. Well, this is Elwood P. Dowd speaking. How are you tonight? Tell me, Mr. Chumley, were you able to locate Harvey? Well, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll find him. I'm sorry I missed you at the McClure cocktail party. Everybody was very charming. I was able to leave quite a few of my cards. Where am I now? Uh, I'm here. But I'm leaving right away because I have to find Harvey. Well, uh, uh, goodbye, Miss Chumley, and my regards to you and anybody else you happen to run into. Bye, my dear. to know if Harvey's here. Tell him Harvey's here. But he isn't. Tell him. Oh. Uh, all right, dear. Yes, Harvey's here. Uh, so why don't you come home? Huh? Oh. Oh. He, but that's what he won't. He 
won't see. He, he wants me to bring Harvey to the telephone. Tell him Harvey can't come to the phone. Harvey's in, in the bathtub. In the bath? He's, he's in the bathtub, and we'll bring him over there. That way we'll find out where he is. Oh, doctor. Do it, Mrs. Simmons. Yes, dear. Harvey's here, but he can't come to the telephone. He's in the bathtub. But I'll send him over as soon as he's dry. So where are you, Elwood? Where are you? Elwood? Where? Oh. Did he hang up? Harvey just walked in the door. He says to look in the bathtub, it must be some stranger. But I know where he is. He's in, in Charlie's place. That's a bar down at 12th and Main. 12th and Main. 12th and Main. Family's rest. Yes. Oh, no, Sergeant, there are no accident reports on him either in town or the suburbs. Look, Sergeant, what did they say at Charlie's place? Charlie's place, 12th and Main. I t that's where Dr. Chumley went four hours ago and found Mr. Dowd there, and that is the last single time he's been seen. Well, well listen, can you send out some of those squad cars? Yes. What, what do you mean? Oh, 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 never mind, Sergeant. He's here now. Well, Mr. Dowd. Good evening, my dear. These are for you. For me? Oh, thank you. They're quite fresh, too. I just picked them outside. Well, I hope Dr. Chumley didn't see you. They're his prized chrysanthemums. No, those, those colors are lovely with your hair. Oh. Well, I, I've never worn burnt orange. It's such a trying color. You'd improve any color, my dear. Thank you. Uh, uh, did Dr. Chumley go to his home? I don't know. Where's Dr. Sanders? Oh, he's in there. Doctor, I have a taxi cab downstairs if you and Miss Kelly can get away now. Where's Dr. Chumley? Was he coming with us? That's nice. I'm sorry to be a little bit late, but I felt that Miss Kelly should have some flowers. I, after what happened out here this afternoon, Doctor, those flowers really should be from you, shouldn't they? You know, as you grow older and pretty women pass you by, you think with deep gratitude of these generous girls of your youth. Well, shall, shall we go now? Uh, no, 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 maybe Wilson has a vase for those flowers, Miss Kelly, now. <clears throat> Mr. Dowd, the situation out here has changed since we met this afternoon, but I urge you to have no resentments. Dr. Chumler is your friend and he wants to help you. Well, that's very nice of him. I want to help him, too. Now, if you begin by taking a cooperative attitude, that's half the battle. We all have to face reality sooner or later. Well, I wrestled with reality for 40 years, Doctor. And I'm happy to state that I finally won out over it. Now, can you and Miss Kelly go oh, with me? Oh, here you are. Okay, upstairs, Would buddy. We're going just up. a minute, Wilson. <clears throat> um, Mr. Dowd, uh, where did you say Dr. Chumley went? As I said, he did not confide his plans in me. Uh, Mr. Dowd, Dr. Chumley went into town to pick you up. That was four hours ago. Well, he did come into Charlie's place around dinner time. I was delighted to see him. He asked for us, and naturally the proprietor brought him over and left him. I introduced him to Harvey. To who? Uh, a white rabbit, six feet tall. Six feet? Six feet, four and a half inches. Oh, okay, fool around with him. While a doctor's probably someplace bleeding to death in a ditch. If those were his plans for the evening, he did not tell me. No, uh, no, just... just, just <clears throat> please, go on, Mr. Dowd. Well, there, there was this beautiful blonde lady, name of Mrs. Smithills, and her escort seated in the booth directly across from us. Well, Dr. Chumley went over to sit next to her, explaining to her that they had once met in Chicago. Then her escort escorted Dr. Chumley back to us and tried to point out that it would be better for Dr. Chumley to mind his own affairs. Does he have any? Does he have any what? Does he have any affairs? How would I know? Uh, Mr. Dowd, you see, we're all so worried. Could you please hurry a little? Well, uh, Dr. Chumley and Harvey got into a conversation. And uh, while they were talking, I went up to the bar to get another drink. And when I got back, they were gone. Where did they go? I mean, where did the doctor go? I don't know. Look, will you cut out the damn double talking, get on with it? You're lying, and we know it. Well, I never lie, Mr. Wilson. Maybe he isn't lying, Wilson. You don't believe that story about the doctor sitting there talking to a big rabbit, do you? Well, maybe Dr. Chumley did go over to Charlie's place. Then saw a big rabbit, do I? Well, well, as stimulating as all this is, I really must be getting downtown. I have things to do. Uh, Mr. Dowd. Well, tell me, um, what is it you do? <laughs> well, Harvey and I, we 
sit on the bars and have a drink or two, play the jukebox. And, and soon the faces of all the other people, they turn toward mine and they smile. And they're saying, we don't know your name, mister, but you're a pretty nice fella. You know? Harvey and I warm ourselves in all these golden moments because, you see, we've entered as strangers and soon we have friends. And they come over and they sit with us and they have a drink with us and they talk to us and they tell about the big terrible things they've done and the big wonderful things they will do and their hopes and regrets and their loves and their hates all very large because nobody ever brings anything small into a bar and then I introduced them to Harvey. And he's bigger and grander than anything they offer me. And when they leave, they leave impressed. The same people seldom come back. But, but that, that's, that's envy, my dear. It is a little bit of envy in the best of us. And that's too bad, isn't it? Go. Yeah. How did you happen to call him Harvey? Well, Harvey's his name. How do you know that? Well, it was a kind of an interesting coincidence on that, Doctor. One day, several years ago, I was walking early in the evening down along Fairfax Street between 18th and 19th. I just helped that. Do you know the block? 18th and 19th? Yes, yes. I, I just helped Ed Hickey into a cab. Ed had been mixing his rye with his gin, and he was really what I just thought he needed conveying. But anyway, I was walking down along the street, and I suddenly heard this voice behind me saying, Good evening, Mr. Dowd. Well, I turned around, and here was this great, tall, six-foot white rabbit leaning up against a lamppost. Well, I thought nothing of that because when you've lived in a town as long as I've lived in this one, you get used to the fact that everybody knows your name. So naturally, I went over to talk to him. And he said to me, he said, Ed Hickey's a little spiff this evening, or could I be mistaken? Well, of course, he was not mistaken. I think the world and all of Ed, but he was spiffed. Whew. But well, anyway, we talked like that for a while. And then I said to him, I said, you have the advantage on me. You know my name, and I don't know yours. And right back at me, he said, what name do you like? Well, I, I didn't even have to think twice about that. So Harvey has always been my, my uh, favorite name. So I said to him, I said, uh, Harvey. And, uh, and, and th this... This is the interesting part of the whole thing. He said, what a coincidence. My name happens to be Harvey. Mr. Dowd, what was your father's name? John. John Frederick. Dowd, when you were a child, you had a playmate, didn't you? Hmm? Someone you were very fond of, someone with whom you spent many happy, carefree hours. Oh, well, sure, Doctor, sure. Didn't you? What was his name? Vanessa. Vanessa McElhenney. Did you ever know the McElhenneys, Doctor? No. No, that's too bad. There were, there were a lot of them, and they circulated. They were nice people. Just very, very nice people. Dowd, now, think carefully. Didn't you ever know someone, somewhere, sometime, by the name of Harvey? Didn't you ever know anyone with that name? Mm, no. No, doctor, not one. I, maybe that's why I always had such hopes for it. All right, Dowd, let's go upstairs. What? Come on, Elwood. Oh, very well, Lyman. Well, I'm afraid I won't be able to visit with you very long because I promised Harvey I'd take him to see the floor show. Right. 
Wilson, if I want you, I'll call for you. Forget it. You made this your show. Run it. I'm all right. I'm being followed. Lock that door. Yeah, Dr. Chumley, who, who's following you? None of your business. Right now. Don't, don't leave me, Wilson. You just told me to get him out. Get get Dumpy on the telephone. Dumpy on the telephone? Yeah. No, don't, don't leave me, Wilson. No, I'm, I'm right here, Doctor. Dumpy, give that guy Dowd his clothes and send him down here right away. Don't leave me, Wilson. No, I'm here, Doctor. Come with I want to talk to you. Hiya, Myrtle. Hello. This is serious. It certainly is. More serious than you suspect. Now, let's go into Dr. Sanderson's office and have a chat. No, no, not in here, not in here. Oh, no, the doctor don't want you in his office. Then sit down, Chumley. Sit down, Myrtle May. Don't leave me, what's up? No, I'm here, doctor. Now, Chumley, here are my notes, the facts. Chumley, has it ever occurred to you there might possibly be something like this rabbit harvest? Of course there isn't, and anyone who thinks so is crazy. Well, don't look at me like that. I'm all right. I take after my father's family. They're all dead. Myrtle May, shut up. Now, Chumley, my client, Mrs. Simmons, under oath, swears that on the morning of November 2nd, while she was standing in the kitchen of her home, she turned and saw this great white rabbit Harvey. He was staring at her. Resenting the intrusion, she made certain remarks and drove him from the room. He left. What did she say to him? That's, she was emphatic. Uh, the remarks are not important. Now... I want to know what she said to this creature to get him out of her sanitarium. I mean, her home. She looked him straight in the eye and exclaimed in the heat of anger, To hell with you. To hell with you. And he left? He left. But that's beside the point. What I am trying Dr. to get... Dr. Chumley! I've been looking all over for you. Dr. Sanderson, I want you to disregard what I said earlier. I want you on my staff. You are a very astute young man. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Uh, Miss Kelly and I have Mr. Dowd upstairs. He's quite calm and quite reasonable. Keep that man under control. He can be dangerous. Oh, you've just got to keep Uncle Elwood out here, Doctor. No, indeed. I, I want this sanitarium the way it was this afternoon before he came out here. Oh, I know what you mean. You do? Of course. It gets on anyone's nerves the way Uncle Elwood knows what's going to happen before it happens. This morning, for instance, he told us that Harvey told him that Mrs. McElhenney's Aunt Rose would drop in on her unexpectedly tonight from Cleveland. Aunt Rose, did she drop in unexpectedly, as Harvey said? Of course she did. Those things always turn out the way he says they will, but what of it? Why don't we care about the McElhenney? And you say this sort of thing happens often? Yes, and isn't it silly? Uncle Elwood says Harvey knows everything. Harvey tells him everything. Well, how can he when there's no such thing as Harvey? Fly specks. I've been spending my life among fly specks while miracles have been leaning on lampposts at 18th and Fairfax. Good. Nobody here but people. Oh, Mother, you promised you wouldn't come out here. Well, good evening. Now, Myrtle May, I brought your Uncle Elwood's bathrobe. Why are you standing around like this? I thought you'd be committing him. Vita, sit down here, girl. Here, let me help you. Oh, no, I will not sit down there. Sit oh. down. 
Is everything settled? It will be. Doctor, may I give an opinion? By all means, of course, Doctor. His opinion. It's my opinion that Elwood P. Dowd is suffering from third-degree hallucinations and the other party concerned is a victim of auto-suggestion. I recommend for him your shock form number 977 and bed rest at home for... Um... You do? Yes, sir, that's my diagnosis. Now, uh, Mr. Dow will no longer see this rabbit after the injection. We've used it successfully in hundreds of psychopathic cases. Don't you call my brother a psychopathic case. There's never been anything like that in our family. Oh, why did Harvey have to bother him in the first place? With the town full of people, why did he have to talk to Elwood? Stop putting your aura in. Keep your aura out. If this shock formula brings people back to reality, let's give it to them. That's where we want Elwood. I'm not sure it would work in a case of this kind, Doctor. It always has. Harvey always follows Elwood home. He does? Yes. But if you gave him the formula, then Elwood couldn't see Harvey and he wouldn't let him in. And then when he came to the door, I'd deal with him. Mother, won't you stop talking about Harvey as if there is such a thing? You have a lot to learn, Myrtle May, and I hope you never learn it. Oh, good evening, everybody. Well, I brought your bathrobe. Thank you, Vader. Well, Tony, what do we do? We've got to do something. I should yes. say you Yes, must. it's imperative. We must. Uh, well, while we're making up our mind, let's all go down to Charlie's place and have a drink. Now, Elwood, you're not going anyplace. You're staying right here. All right, quite. Uh, doctor, uh, how'd you get along with Harvey? Shh. Shumley, we're waiting for your answer. Ah? The shock formula. What's your decision? <laughs> oh, well, I, I must be alone with this man. Uh, would you all please go into the other office? I'll give you my diagnosis in a moment. Oh, do hurry, doctor. Yes, of course. Now, you course. wait here, Elwood. Come along, Judge. What else, Peter? What else? Mr. Dowd, uh, can I get you this chair? Oh, thank you. Would you, uh, can I get you a cigar? Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, Mr. Is there anything else I can get you? What do you have in mind? Mr. Dowd, what sort of a man are you? Where do you come from? Didn't I give you one of my cards? And where in the name of heaven did you find him? You mean Harvey the Pooka? Is it true that he gets advance notice? Yes. Yes, I'm happy to say it is, yes. Harvey, Harvey is very versatile. Harvey can stop clocks. You mean... Uh, well, you, you, you've heard the expression, his face could stop a clock? Yes, but... but well, Har Harvey says that he can look at your clock and stop it. And you can go away as long as you like with whomever you like and go as far as you like. And when you get back, not one minute will have ticked by. You mean that he... Uh, you, see, you see, science has overcome time and space. Well, Harvey's overcome not only time and space, but any objections. And does he do this for you? Well, he would be willing to at any time, but I don't know. So far, I've just never been able to figure out any place I'd rather be. I, I just have a wonderful time wherever I am, whomever I'm with. I, I'm having a fine time right here with you, Doctor. Uh, that's a Corona Corona you gave me there, isn't it? I know where I'd go. Where? I'd go to Akron. Akron? There's a cottage camp outside of Akron in a grove of maple trees. Cool, green, beautiful. That's my favorite tree. I'd go there with a, with a pretty young woman. A strange woman. A quiet woman under a tree. I wouldn't even want to know her name. And I'd just be Mr. Brown. No, no but, but, but why, why wouldn't you want to know her name? I, after all, you might be acquainted with the same people. I'd send out for cold beer, and I'd talk to her. I'd tell her things I've never told anyone else before, things that have been locked up in here. Then I'd send out for more cold beer. No whiskey? No, beer's better. Well, maybe under a tree. I, 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 just, I just thought maybe the woman would like a highball. Or... I wouldn't even want her to talk to me. But as I talked to her, I'd want her to stretch out a soft white hand and stroke my brow and say, Oh, you poor thing. You poor, poor thing. How long would you want this to go on, Doctor? Two weeks. Two, two weeks? 
Well, I, I, uh, I, I, I just, I just can't help feeling you're making a mistake about not allowing the woman to talk, and and I know you're making a mistake about all that beer and no whiskey, but it's your two weeks, so you. Think? Cold beer, action, and one last fling. Tell me, Mr. Dowler, do you think he, would he, could he do this for me? He could, and he might. I've never heard Harvey say a word against Akron. But By the way, Doctor, where is Harvey? Why, don't you know? Well, now, the last time I saw him, he was with you. Yes. Well, he's probably waiting for me down Charlie's place. Yes, that's right. He's probably down Charlie's place. No, no, don't go in there, Mr. Dodge. Well, I didn't want to leave without saying goodbye to my friend, Dr. Sanderson. No. None of those people are your friends. I am your friend. Well, thank you, Doctor. I'm yours. And this sister of yours, she's at the bottom of the whole conspiracy against you. She wants me to lock you up. Today, she had commitment papers drawn up on you. She's got your power of attorney, the key to your safety deposit vault. She brought you out here. She did all that in one afternoon. That Vita sure is a whirlwind, didn't she? Good Lord, man, don't you have any sense of righteous indignation? Oh, Doctor, I... I you, you know, years ago, my mother used to say to me, she'd say, in this world, Elwood, you, she always called me Elwood. She'd say, in this world, Elwood, you must be oh, oh, so smart, or oh, so pleasant. Well, for years, I was smart. I recommend pleasant. And you can quote me on that. Oh, decency. I've got to have that rabbit. Come in, all of you, please. Is everything settled? I find I concur with Dr. Sanderson. Oh, thank you, Dr. Oh, that's wonderful. What a relief. Chumley, let's get the job done. Well, let's celebrate. I, I have a whole new list of bars in this address book of mine. Now, now this injection may have a powerful counter-reaction. Do you think he would give us permission to take it? Oh, of course, if I ask him. And give up the rabbit? I doubt it. Well, don't ask him. Just give it to him. That's Blondie's Chicken Inn, Bessie's Barn Dance, Better Late Than Never, and Benny's Drive-In. Elwood. No, no. We'll go to Benny's Drive-In. Vita, how many of us will there be? One, two, three. Oh, Elwood. Mr. Dowd, I have a formula, 977, that I think would be very good for you. Will you take it? Elwood, you won't see this rabbit anymore. But you will see your responsibilities and your duties. Uh-huh. Well, uh, doctor, if you thought of this, I'm sure it must be a very fine thing. And if I happen to run into anybody that needs it, I'll be happy to recommend it. As for myself, I wouldn't care for it. You hear that, doctor? You hear that, judge? That's what we have to put up with. Well, Vita. Vita, do, do you want me to take this? I'm only thinking of you, Elwood. You're my brother, and I've known you for years. I'd do anything for you, Elwood. That Harvey won't do anything for you. He's making a fool out of you. Don't be a fool, Elwood. Well, I won't. Myrtle May and I have to live at the house with him. Our friends never come to see us anymore. We don't have any social life. We don't have any life at all. We're perfectly miserable. I wish I was dead. But maybe you don't care. Well, I... Well, I, I've always felt that Vita should have everything she needs. But... Uh, Vita... Are you sure? All right, I'll take it. Where do I go, doctor? My office, Mr. Dobb. You say goodbye to the old fellow for me, will you? How long will this...
this take, Doctor? Oh, just a few minutes. Why don't you wait? We'll wait. What do you want? I'm looking for a little short... Oh, oh there you are. Lady, you jumped out of the cab without paying me. Oh, I forgot. Oh, how much is it? All the way out here from town, $8.75. $8.75. Well, now, that's funny. I was, I could have sworn I heard had my coin purse with me. Oh, my. Myrtle, may, do you have any money with you? No. Judge, do you have 875 that I could give this driver? Sorry, nothing but a check. We don't take checks. I know. Well, I'm sorry. I'll have to get it from my brother for you. But I can't do that now because he's in there getting an injection. You'll have to wait. I'm sorry. You're going to get my money from your brother who's in there to get some of that stuff they shoot out here? Yes, it won't take long, though. Lady, I want my money now. Uh, I told you it'll only take a few minutes, and then I want you to drive us back home afterwards. And I told you I want my money now. I'm nosing the cab back to town. You can wait for the bus at 6 in the morning. Well, of all the stubborn pig-headed things. I should say so. What's the matter with you? Nothing that 875 won't fix. You heard me. Take it or leave it. That's the most unreasonable thing I ever heard of in my life. Dr. Charlie? Yes? Oh, have you started the injection yet? No, not yet. Oh, good. Well, th this man, this taxi driver, wants $8.75. Can Elwood step out here for a moment, please? Well, don't be too long. Oh, please, thank you. Really? Elwood, yeah. that man, would, I forgot my coin purse, and he wants $8.75 for the tax. And don't give him a penny more because he's been very rude. Oh. oh. Howdy-do. Dowd's my name, Elwood P. Lofgren's mine, E.J. Oh, all right, all right, Mr. Lofgren. Well, uh, do you know these people here? Do you know my sister, Vita Simmons, and my charming little niece, Myrtle Mae Simmons, and uh, Judge Gaffney? All right. Well, here is. Lived around here long, Mr. Lofkin? Yeah. I've lived around here all my life. All your life, all your life. You know, enjoy your work? You... It's okay. Uh, I, I've been with the Apex Cavs 15 years. And my brother Joe's been driving for Brown's Cavs pretty near 12. Is that so? You, you, you drive for Apex for 15 years, and your brother Joe drives for Brown. Well, that's very interesting, isn't it, Vita? <laughs> but, Mr. Robert, let me give you one of my cards. Mr. Now, Robert, better get on with this. Yes, just a second, Doctor. Now, I live at this address with my uh, sister and my charming little niece. Wouldn't you and your brother like to come and have dinner with us sometime? Sure. Be glad to. When? When would you be glad to? I couldn't come any night but Tuesday. I'm on duty all the rest of the week. Well, then we'll just have to make it Tuesday night. And we'll look forward to seeing you and your brother on Tuesday night, won't we, Vita? Oh, Elwood, I'm sure this man has friends of his own. Well, Vita, one can't have too many friends. Elwood, don't keep Dr. Chumley waiting. It's rude. Hmm? Oh, money. Got a bottle. Oh. There, there, keep the change, Mr. Lofgren, and I look forward to seeing you and your brother Tuesday night. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go, I, there's a, have to go in here. Sure. A sweet guy. Of course. And you could just as easily have waited. Oh, no. <laughs> Listen, lady. I've been driving this route 15 years. I brought them out here to get that stuff and taking them back after they had it. It changes them. Well, I certainly hope so. And you ain't kidding. On the way out here, they sit back and enjoy the ride. They talk to me. Sometimes we stop and watch the sunsets and look at the birds flying. Sometimes we stop and watch the birds when there ain't no birds. And look at the sunsets when it's raining. But we have a swell time and I always get a big tip. But afterwards, uh-oh. Afterwards, uh-oh? What do you mean, afterwards, uh-oh? Mm. They crab, crab, crab. They yell at me to watch the lights, watch the brakes, watch the intersections. They scream at me to hurry. They got no faith in me or my buggy. Yet it's the same cab, same driver, and we're going back over the very same road. It's no fun. And no tips. My brother would have tipped you anyway. He's very generous, always has been. Not after this, he won't be. Lady, after this, you'll be a perfectly normal human being. And you know what bastards they are. Glad I met you. I'll wait. Oh. Oh. Judge, get murdered. Oh. Stop it. Ellen, come out of there. Come out of there. Lady, you can't do that. They're 
Dr. Chumley's giving the injection. I don't want to put the head in. I don't like people like that. Don't, don't, I don't want to put the head in. You shut up. Oh. I've lived longer than you have. I remember my father. I remember oh, your oh, father. Oh, this I remember. Oh, she's oh. Sorry, doctor. Oh. She's sounding off again. She wants to stop the injection. You haven't given it to him, have you, doctor? No, but we're all ready. Simmons, oh. take her away. Yeah, come on, you. You let go of me, you white slaver. You don't know what you want. You didn't want that rabbit either. And what's the matter with Harvey? If Elwood and Michael May and I want to live with Harvey, what's it to you? You don't even have to come around. That's our business. Oh, Vita. Oh, Elwood. All right, Vita. Oh, yes, Harvey. Right. Vita's all worn out. She's done a lot today. Have it your own way. I'm not leaving my game at the club again, no matter how big the animal is. Get away from him, Myrtle May. Come on, Elwood. Let's get out of here. I hate this place. Right. I wish I'd never seen it. Now, look uh, here. No, no, it's what Vita wants, Doctor. Well, look at that. Why, oh, it must have been there all the time. I could have paid that taxi driver myself. Harvey. Come on, Elwood. Come on, Myrtle May. Hurry up, everybody. Hey, hey, Myrtle, how about Saturday night? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Myrtle May. Well, Doctor, I... You know, I've, I've always known what my family thought about Harvey, but I've always been kind of curious about what Harvey's family thinks of me. Hey! Well, where have you been? Well, come on out here. Where have you been? Where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. Night, Doctor. Hi, Mr. Wilson. After you. <laughs> I thought maybe I'd have a break. How about yourself? Hmm?